Hello everyone. So today we will discuss about VoLTE optimization. This will be our third session and in this session we will discuss about the impact of DRX on VoLTE and how we can optimize it to minimize this impact. Okay, so let's start. In the previous sessions we discussed how a VoLTE packet looks like. So uh, a VoLTE packet has a periodicity of 20 milliseconds. So you will see, let's say this green bar indicates a VoLTE packet. So a UE gets a VoLTE packet over here in this subframe, which is only one millisecond long. Then the next packet comes after 20 milliseconds. So in between, we can say that the UE does not get anything. So uh, from the the battery life perspective, uh, this means that uh, the UE is awake all the time, but it's only getting data only in one millisecond here, one millisecond here, one millisecond here. So you can say that in this uh, 100 millisecond time duration it only got data in six milliseconds so one two three four five six right so uh, this means that out of 100 milliseconds if the UE was only awake of for six milliseconds it could still get all the data and uh, we could have saved a lot of battery life if for the other time duration of time the UE just goes to sleep mode so this is where the DRX concept comes into play so let's see how the DRX looks like so over here uh, let's say this is now our DRX cycle. The blue uh, rectangle indicates when the UE is awake, or it is called the on duration cycle. So UE wakes up during this time, reads the packet, then goes back to sleep. So right now in this example, I have put this on duration to be around 10 milliseconds. So now what will happen? UE wakes up for 10 milliseconds, gets this packet, then goes to sleep for 10 milliseconds, then again wakes up for 10 milliseconds, gets this packet, then goes to sleep again for 10 milliseconds and so on. So in this case what happened is that now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 sleep modes. Uh, so out of 100 milliseconds now, 50 milliseconds of the time UE is sleeping. So that's how we have increased our battery efficiency by 50% now, right? So we can reduce it further that will increase the battery efficiency more. But the problem comes when we have, let's say, retransmissions. So let's say this over here, this packet was not successfully decoded by the UE. Let's say the UE was unable to decode the PDCCH of this packet. That means the E node B will need to retransmit it. So a retransmission in LTE usually takes around eight milliseconds. So the, the packet will be retransmitted over here. So that's why I kept this at 10 milliseconds. So in case of a retransmission, especially when the UE is unable to decode the PDCCH, this will uh, make sure that the retransmission is also within the time uh, on duration time limit. So this helps in uh, reducing uh, the impact of retransmissions. Otherwise, let's say if we uh, had a smaller value, the retransmission will actually be done in the next on duration timer. So this way, uh, this is a good compromise between battery life and call quality. Now another option could be something like this, where we increase uh, the, uh, the DRX cycle from 20 milliseconds to 40 milliseconds. Now the UE will get up every 10 milliseconds, right? And it will get two packets here. Then it will wait for 30 milliseconds. It will go to sleep mode for 30 milliseconds, gets up here again gets two packets. So over here, this packet will be delayed in the buffer and these two packets will be combined to be sent over here. Similarly, this packet and this packet will be combined over here. So in this case, what we have done is that uh, we have increased uh, the DRX cycle. Now over here, we have 30 milliseconds here and 30 milliseconds here. So around 60 milliseconds of sleep time. So we have increased our sleep time that means we have increased our battery efficiency, but we have also increased the delay on some packets here. So this packet and this packet, for instance, will be 20 milliseconds more delayed. Now, another option would be that uh, we use, uh, we reduce this on duration timer. So this is the settings which usually uh, the Apple handset recommends and because um, Apple certification for VoLTE recommends this, so nearly all uh, the networks in the end, they have to go and use something similar. So in this setting, what's going on? That our duration is still 40 milliseconds 
for the DRX cycle, but the UE will only get up for four milliseconds and gets two packets here. Then it goes to sleep for 36 milliseconds, gets up for four milliseconds, gets two packets here, goes back to sleep for again 36 more milliseconds, and then gets up again for four milliseconds, and so on. So now what happens here? The issue here is that let's say this packet over here, if the PDCCH is not decoded successfully, then the UE will not know that this packet was ever transmitted. So the E node B will need to retransmit this packet, but because the o UE is only awake for, for four milliseconds, the E node B cannot retransmit over here because it needs around eight milliseconds to retransmit. So the E node B will need to do the retransmission of this packet over here, the dark blue bar. So it will have to move to the next session, right? So now, if you remember, this packet was originally over here, right? So it's already delayed by 20 milliseconds. And now because of retransmission, it has been delayed for another 40 milliseconds. So the overall delay for this packet is now around 60 milliseconds. Now uh, for Vault E, for QCI1, as per 3GPB, the packet delay budget is 100 milliseconds. Now what this means that uh, if a UE, um, if a packet delay is gets delayed by more than 100 millisecond, then it will be discarded. That means the packet will be lost. So what happened if, for instance, the, this, this packet is again uh, unsuccessfully decoded over here as well. So the E node B will need to retransmit it again on the next opportunity, which will be again 40 milliseconds apart. So if you remember, this packet was over here. So it has already been delayed by 20 milliseconds. N with first retransmission, it is delayed for 40 milliseconds more. So 40 plus 20 is equal to 60. And if there is another retransmission, which is again 40 milliseconds delayed, so 60 plus 40 is equal to 100. So this packet will most probably be discarded and we will have a packet loss. So if you look over here without DRX, there were five opportunities or six opportunities if we say like that. So if this packet was uh, retransmitted, it can be transmitted anywhere over here. Eight milliseconds here, it can, then again 16 milliseconds, then again 24 milliseconds. So the E node B has ample opportunities to retransmit this packet all over this space. But in this case, because of the opportunities for scheduling are very, very limited, we only have one here, one here and one here. So if this packet is has to be retransmitted or it's not decoded successfully, then E node B only has two more opportunities to send the packet successfully uh, until the packet delay budget expires and the packet is lost. So for instance, if this packet had to be retransmitted, it can only be retransmitted here. If it fails here, then it can be retransmitted here. So it only has two opportunities or sometimes even this will not be an opportunity because this packet has already been delayed by 20 milliseconds from round about here right that's as you as you remember for this packet so this is why uh, with uh, with the activation of drx the packet delay budget comes into play and we might be able to we might see much more packet discards and packet loss which can result in poor voice quality and or in some cases, it can also result in uh, vaulty call drops. So um, now we know that this is the DRX structure that most of the networks will be using. Now we need to find out how we can uh, mitigate the impact of this DRX structure. So let's have a look at some of the optimization actions that we can take. Now the first option is to understand the packet delay budget and if we can extend it or not. Now, um, as I previously explained, the packet delay budget is defined in 3GPP uh, 23.203 spec. And for QCI1, the packet delay budget is 100 milliseconds. So this actually ma maintains that uh, for a QCI1, a Vaulty user, 100 millisecond delay is much, much high. So any packet beyond that uh, should be discarded and uh, should not be sent to the UE. So uh, what happens here that the, when the a packet enters an E node B's buffer, E node B keeps monitoring the delay of each packet in the buffer, and then it keeps measuring it against the PDB, the packet delay budget. If it finds out that the packet delay budget, um, if the packet delay is less than the packet delay budget, then it will keep monitoring the packet delay. If it finds out that the packet delay is greater than the packet delay budget, then 
it will discard that packet. So this is how uh, the algorithm works inside the PDCP layer. Now let's take an example here. This is an LTE E node B buffer. So inside the buffer we have three different UEs. The blue one indicates one UE which is in very good radio conditions. CQI is equal to 14. Uh, this indicates a yellow one. The orange one indicates a UE in bad radio conditions. CQI is equal to 4. So you can say that delay, this is the buffer delay. You can see that delay is higher inside the buffer for this UE because it will have more retransmissions. And this is CQI is equal to 8 means some a user which is in medium uh, coverage or medium radio conditions. So it has delay lesser than th this one but higher than this one. So what, well let's assume that our packet delay budget is equal to 100 milliseconds over here. This is the line for 100 milliseconds. So what will happen is that with this uh, configuration the E node B will discard all these packets over here. So these three packets will be discarded uh, because they are already beyond uh, the packet delay budget of 100 milliseconds. So another option, um, a quick option, a quick win over here could be that we increase this packet delay budget configuration slightly. So let's say if I change it to 120 milliseconds and this puts it over here, then what will happen? That only one packet will be discarded and these packets will still be successfully transmitted. So um, in this case what is going on that we are increasing the packet delay budget which can increase the volte latency. So it there's a compromise here. We, we do not want to increase packet delay budget too much because then the volte users will start to experience the delay in the the lag in the call. That is not good right. So for the experience perspective we can increase it a bit but we should not increase it extensively. So somewhere around 120, 130 milliseconds is still doable. Uh, a human uh, ear cannot really discern around this uh, kind of delay. But when you exceed it above 150 milliseconds, then there are chances that the user might start to experience the delay and that's not a good thing. So one of the options to mitigate this kind of uh, discard would be to actually just slightly increase the packet delay budget. This will give this might give another opportunity during the DRX cycle. If you remember in the previous uh, slide we discussed that for 100 milliseconds there might be two uh, opportunities or three opportunities at most. With 120 milliseconds we can be sure that there will be three opportunities for instance. If you go with 150 milliseconds then we can say that maybe there are now four opportunities for the UE uh, to get a DRX cycle. So uh, something like this uh, might help in case of the DRX problems. Now another example, another situation that can help in this scenario is the TTI bundling. Now TTI bundling, we will discuss it in one of our lectures that will come. Uh, it is an optimization action where the UEs in bad coverage will send uh, multiple packets of the same, multiple copies of the same packet. So when you send multiple copies of the same packet in uplink, that increases the uh, link budget in uplink because the E node B will get multiple copies. It can combine those copies together and get a better gain from them. Um, but there is another advantage of TTI bundling. Advantage or side effect we can call it uh, but the impact is like this. When a Volte is in DRX state it keeps checking the uplink SINR. If the uplink SINR is uh, above the TTI bundling threshold then the Volte user is kept in DRX state. But if the E node B finds out that the Volte UE is in bad coverage such that the uplink SINR value of the Volte UE is below the TTI bundling threshold then uh, the E node B activates TTI bundling and it exits the DRX state. So uh, TTI bundling and DRX state are mutually exclusive. So when the E node B uh, says that a UE needs to be in TTI bundling state then it asks the UE to exit the DRX state. So it activates the TTI bundling but deactivates the DRX. So in this way there's a trick now. So if we, if we are experiencing that we have high, high impact of DRX and the impact of DRX is mostly related to uh, retransmissions especially on the PDCCH. So uh, it means that the users that will have more retransmissions or more decoding failures will be the ones which are actually in bad radio conditions. For instance like let's take this example. This UE is in good radio conditions so it should have a low packet loss. 
while this UV is in bad radio conditions, so it should have more retransmissions and then there are more chances of packet loss because it is in the DRX right now. It will have limited number of scheduling opportunities and it will have higher packet discard rate. So if my TDA bundling threshold is equal to 3 dB falls somewhere here and I change this to let's say 8 dB and now it falls over here then this UE which let's say it's uplink SNR was 5 dB then what will happen now it will qualify as a TTI bundling UE and the E node B will ask this UE to deactivate DRX and activate TTI bundling so in this way what will happen is that now this UE will not be uh, having any problem of DRX because it will have uh, unlimited opportunities, right? There will be no issues of the limitation of opportunities due to DRX. So in this way, this is a trick. We can increase our TTI bundling threshold and we can, uh, that means we can put more UEs inside the TTI bundling, uh, the TTI bundling candidate and that can reduce the impact of DRX, especially in the low coverage or poor quality users. Again, the drawback would be that if you have more TTI bundling, then that means multiple UEs will be sending multiple copies of the same packet that will increase your uplink overhead. So that is a drawback. So you have to really find out the compromise here. And also there are um, other implementation of vendors have new algorithms which can actually disable DRX in poor, poor channel quality. You can also explore that as well. But if you do not have that option, then TTI bundling can be used as a trick to optimize DRX impact. Now, um, another thing that can be done is uh, this one, uh, scheduling algorithm. Now, uh, we have multiple scheduling algorithms. Let's understand one by one and see which one is the best for Volte. So the first one, we have round robin scheduling algorithm. So again, we have the same uh, uh, example that we discussed in the previous slides. Let's say we have three UEs. One UE is in good condition, the blue, blue one, CQ is equal to 14. The green one is in medium condition, CQ is equal to 8. And the orange one is in bad condition, CQ is equal to 4. And these indicate the VOLTE packets. And if we go upwards like this, the buffer delay is increasing. So this shows that CQ is equal to 4 has a higher buffer delay. So in case of round robin scheduling activity, in this algorithm, how the E node B will send packets to the UE? Like this. So it will choose one packet from here, send it to the UE then choose this packet, send it to the, to the UE, then choose this packet, send it to the UE, then this packet over here, then this packet over here, then this packet over here. So what it is doing is, it is sending, choosing one by one, giving them equal opportunity, and uh, each of them is getting uh, one packet each uh, for a scheduling interval, for a scheduling opportunity. This is called round robin. Now, this is good overall because it gives um, each op uh, user an equal opportunity so they all have equal share but what will happen here is that because of the uh, vaulty packet delay budget most probably the high delay packets like this and this will be discarded while this might still be able to um, is transmitted over the air easily now this is the uh, drawback of this technique another option would be the max c by i scheduling what this does is that it um, tries to maximize the throughput by giving the scheduling opportunities towards the higher CQI users. So what it will do, it will do like this. So this is the user which is the, has, has the highest CQI. So it might get the highest number of scheduling opportunities. So this goes here, this goes here, then maybe this goes here, then maybe this goes here, then again you get a chance on the CQI is equal to 4, then again CQI is equal to 14 goes here. So it is more biased towards the uh, high CQI users. And in this case, we might have um, high packet discard on the low CQI users because they already are suffering due to high delay due to transmissions, retransmissions. And now they're also not getting the scheduling opportunities because of this scheduling algorithm. So this one is not good for VOLT as well because it, this will increase the packet discard rate due to the strict packet delay budget of VOLT. So another option is the delay based scheduling. So let's see how this works. In this case, the E node B looks for the packets which has uh, been delayed in the buffer 
and the packets which have be have the highest delay in the buffer will be prioritized so in this case the inode b will select this packet first because it is the highest uh, delay it has the highest monitored monitored delay and so the inode b will send this packet first then the next one is this one then the next one is this one because it has the highest delay among all these packets if this goes here then it should be this one right and so on so this shows that this one um, is sending uh, the 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 packets based on their monitored delay or their calculated delay inside the buffer so what it will do is that it will reduce the overall uh, average packet delay inside the buffer and in that case our packet discards due to packet delay budget will reduce so when we go for volte uh, and when we have especially when we have limited number of uh, opportunities for scheduling like in drx state or when we have congestion because congestion will also reduce the number of uh, scheduling opportunities so this one is the best option for a volte network it will and it will reduce the number of packet discards reduce the number of packet losses and improve the volte packet quality so uh, in this case in all of these algorithms the best algorithm for volte should be delay based scheduling so this is how we can optimize uh, the issue of packet delay packet delay and packet discard especially when it comes to drx now um, another important point would be that uh, as i said before the pdcch is very important in volte because if in case the pdcch is not uh, this uh, not decoded successfully then the ue will never know that there was a transmitted transmission addressed to it if the pdcch is decoded and the ue is unable to decode the pdsch then at least the ue knows that there was a transmission addressed to it and then it knows there will be a retransmission as well so the ue can wait and uh, uh, in the on duration timer you can extend it uh, because of the retransmission timer and in that case the impact is not severe but the if the ue is unable to decode the pdcch the ue will never know that there was a transmission addressed to it and it will go back to sleep mode so the most important thing in the volte uh, for packet loss and call quality and call drops would be the pdcch and this is what we will cover in the next session how we can make the pdcch more robust for volte how can we do optimization on the pdcch to ensure that the pdcch is always uh, successfully decoded by the ue and how this helps in our volte call quality optimization how it improves our volte mos and how it reduces our volte drop rate as well so stay tuned um, i hope you like this if you do please subscribe um, do share with your colleagues as well see you next time bye bye